process for generating SSH keys is actually pretty simple. All I need to do is type in SSH keygen. I want to specify a type. Now there are various types you can use, RSA, DSA, etc. Without going into too much detail, RSA is typically preferred. And the reason is we can specify a size. So B4096, that allows me to have the largest key I possibly can. Other like DSA, you cannot specify the size of the key. And with RSA, we can specify a particularly long key, which makes it more secure. So I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to generate the key. And I'm going to accept the default file to save this under. Now, the next part, once I hit enter, it's going to ask me for a passphrase. Now, you don't actually need to use a passphrase. And the difference is one in security and one in user friendliness. So if you use the passphrase, you will have to type in your passphrase every time you try to use SSH into the remote server. And this makes things more secure. So an attacker could hypothetically steal the file that your SSH key is stored under, and then they would be able to use your server. Now, it is a bit of an extra step to use the passphrase every time you want to log into the server, but it does make things more secure. And the whole point of using keys is for security. So even though using a key without a passphrase would allow you to SSH into a secure server without using a passphrase, it isn't as secure. Now, if you are just using this personally, it might not be that much of a risk. It's not the end of the world. It's not like having no password on your machine at all. And having a, a SSH key with a without a password is more secure than using SSH with a passphrase. But you can just add this extra layer on it. And since I'm intending to open this up to a public website, I definitely want to use the passphrase. Now, when I hit enter, it's going to go through a process of generating this new SSH key and store it on my local machine. The next step is going to be to send my public key to the server. And that is what's going to allow me to SSH into it. Now, when I do this, it's actually going to show the key on the screen. So there's going to be a bit of a cut here and you won't see the output on my version because that would be foolish and that would defeat the purpose of doing this in the first place. So I'm going to hit enter, clear the screen, there'll be a cut, and then we'll pick up on the next step. Now that the key has been generated, all we need to do is send that over to the server. And this is also a pretty easy process. So I'll say SSH copy ID, and then I'm going to type in the IP address of the server. And on my local network, that is 192.168.0.113. Now, I don't need to type in my username. So the username on the server matches the username on the client. On this computer, the one I'm working on here, my username is Eric, and on the server, my username is also Eric. So I don't need to specify. If it's different though, you can type in your username, the at sign, and then the IP address. For me, that's not necessary. It'll work either way. I'm just gonna leave it off because i that's how I intend to use this. Okay, it's going to ask me to authorize this machine. So I've never SSH'd into this machine before. My local client does not recognize it. So it's gonna ask me if I want to continue. And indeed I do. Okay, so now that it is attempting to log into the server. It's going to ask me for my password and I'll type that in again. And I made a bit of a mistake here because I typed in the password I used for the SSH key and not the password on the server itself. So the password I used for my SSH key that I just created is different from the server's actual password, this user on that server. And that is the password it's looking for, not my SSH key. So I'll type that one in instead. Now that the key has been added, I can try to SSH into the server. It's going to try to use my key. Now, since I used a passphrase, the key is encrypted on my local machine. So I need to decrypt it before I can actually send it to the server. And you do that by typing in your password. And again, this is the password that I created with the key. 
So I just hit enter there. And there we go, we are into the system. So as you can see, it is very easy to set up an SSH key. And this is a much more secure way of using SSH on a server. Now I'm going to repeat this process across all of my servers. And the way that this works is that the key is relevant to my local machine. So if I exit the server here, it's this machine that I'm worried about, my, my laptop, the one I actually work on, not the servers. And that key is specific to my laptop. And so what I can do is I can send that same key to multiple servers and use the one key to log into all of them. And that is not a security concern. You can and technically also do this on multiple clients. So I can copy my private key over to different clients. And this is a terrible idea. You don't want to do that. The, the reason is that you're vulnerable on each machine. If someone gets access to my local machine, then they have access to my private key. And if you have that one private key spread out across multiple machines, you're going to open up that risk more and more. So with each client, you want to generate your a specific private key, but you can send that private key to multiple servers. Now there's one more thing that we want to do before we finish up here. Since I have enabled SSH keys, and that is the secure way that I want to access this server, I want to turn off the ability for anybody to access it through passwords. If I wanted to use passwords, then I would not have generated the key. So since I have the key, I don't need the password. All we need to do is edit the configuration file. So we're going to, I'm going to use nano and we need to do sudo for this. SSH slash sshd underscore config. It will ask for the password. And now that we're here, we need to scroll down to find where it allows us to use a password right here at the very bottom for me. And we're going to just change this to no. I'm going to write it. And just like that, we can no longer access this from any machine without the key. So the keys that I've generated are the only ways into the server. You can't use the password. And that's exactly what I want. So either you need to have my laptop using my key with the password I generated for that key, or you need physical access to the server itself. Those are the only routes of entry. And so this becomes a very secure setup. All right, so we all know how this part works. If this video is useful to you, please hit the like button. It helps me grow the channel and it'll help other people find the video. Also, this is part of a larger project where I'm trying to build a company starting with just three old laptops. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching.